If you are an investor out there in Florida looking to make your way in the real estate business with a very moderate budget, right? Teeny tiny. I am here to help you get your business off the ground. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. I am James Wise, and today's show is going to resonate with a lot of you folks out there trying to get started. Perhaps you all live in Florida like my client, Amber, right? Amber, you're down there in Florida, and your situation is you've already house hacked one deal, right? You did a real good job. You got yourself a multifamily deal. It's like 500 something thousand dollars is your mortgage that you locked in at like two and a half percent interest, 3.5 percent down. Beautiful. And eventually you're going to move on, move out of there and turn that into a full rental, right? When you do the house hacks, folks, you just got to live there for one year. So, Amber, you are able to go in and get yourself the real asset, which is that $500,000 mortgage at 2.5%, right? And now you got $60,000 left over. You're looking to get some more rentals, build up your business, right? You're looking at out-of-state investing, too, because it's a lot cheaper than Florida, right? When you do non-owner-occupied deals, if you're not going to live there for a year, you have to put down 25%, right? You got 60K, so 60K... It's only going to get you if you're put, it, putting down the whole 25%, right? What is that? It's that $240,000 worth of property. Not a lot of property, especially down in Florida when uh, stuff like what you're buying, what you're house hacking, which you've even said is in kind of a sketchy neighborhood, is costing, uh, you know, triple that, right? Double, triple that, okay? So you decided to look out of state, and I'm helping you get low-cost investment properties, right? Today's property it's a duplex, only going to be 135 k right? That's like five times less than what yours is, right? A couple questions you gave me after I gave you some other videos is you're asking me, like, how do I get more cash flow? How do I turn this into a full-time gig, right? Well, I'd say the first thing you need to understand is you got to be very cautious with that type of thinking, right? If you're running into folks out there, Amber, that are telling you right now, uh, with your $60,000 that in some quick amount of time, you're going to be able to transition to a full-time out-of-state real estate investor, quit your job and live off your cash flow. Those ain't the people you want to talk to, right? Those are the people that are just selling you a bill of goods, man. They're blowing smoke. This is very much a get-rich-slow game, okay? You collect cash flow. You don't want to quit your job. If you want to go full-time into real estate, and quit your job, what you'd want to do uh, is become an investor agent, right? You invest uh, while working in the business as a real estate agent. That's probably the best way to go full-time into real estate. But what you have to understand is that's creating an entire new business, right? The act of making a whole bunch of money as a real estate agent, uh, you know, that's something totally different. And that's going to put a pause on your investing, right? Because Lenders will now no longer give you loans until you have two years of commission-based income as an agent, right? So you got to be real cautious with that. Right now, uh, the biggest thing you got going for you is you got a good job, right? You got good W-2 to income, and you have the ability to get financed, right? So don't try to run before you walk. What you want to focus on is continuing to utilize your best and highest use of your time, which is working your day job, and you want to invest uh, the additional proceeds, right? Right now it's 60 k into cash-flowing real estate. This is very much a get-rich-slow game, not a get-rich-quick game. I would be very, very cautious with anybody out there trying to tell you, ah, I can make you a real estate millionaire like that. Quick your boss. Kick, fire your boss, quit your 9 to 5, blah, 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 blah. That is some wild thinking. And typically, when there's people selling programs or discussions about that kind of stuff, the only person making money is going to be the person selling that program. You need to get down to the fundamentals, right? Utilize your funds and your ability to get finance, especially because you haven't utilized your 10 residential mortgages, folks. 
Uh, Amber, you get 10 residential mortgages, 30-year mortgages. If you're doing house tax, owner-occupied stuff, as we've discussed, you can get in 3% down, 5% down, 10% down. If you're doing uh, non-owner-occupied stuff, it's only 25% down. Residential loans between one and four unit properties, between one and 25% down, depending if you're going to live there for a year. That is the best asset you can have right now, and you only get that asset because you haven't got 10 of them. Once you get 10, you can no longer qualify those because they can't really get sold on the secondary market, number one. Number two, the only way you get to those 10 is by having stable W-2 income. So if I were you, I wouldn't even think about possibly transitioning out of my day job into some type of full-time real estate career until I have utilized all 10 of those mortgages and have 10 well, probably nine, nine cash flowing rental properties to show for them. And then the 10th, you know, that would be your personal. Life. Eventually, you got you to live somewhere, right? So you got to take care of home base first, right? I know you're moving as you house hack stuff, but uh, you should not be considering leaving that job going full time into this business till you've exhausted all 10 of those mortgages, utilizing, milking everything you can out of your current day job. With that said, the types of investments you should be looking at, right? Low cost cash flow investments, right? So what I got for you today with all that in mind is one that's going to kick off a little bit more cash flow than the previous ones I've sent for you. Uh, let's take a look at all the numbers right after this. Two, please. Welcome back, folks. We got us a nice duplex. Nice duplex in Cleveland, Ohio, man. Look at this thing. This bad boy right here, that's looking good. And you see this up front here? This is all vinyl sided, all right, on the porch. Vinyl sided. That's very important for the new lead laws. On the side here, aluminum siding. That's what I want to see, right? Because this is in Cleveland, Ohio, okay? And lead's important. Hot topic right now, right? The address is 2007 Natchez, Cleveland, priced at 139 Let's talk about this lead first and foremost, right? Lead is a big deal right now. They just rolled out new lead laws. Don't worry. Teach you all about them. Link below. Got a half-hour video explaining the process to you. If you're going to be a landlord in Cleveland, Ohio, you need to know that it's non-negotiable, folks. It's not like, oh, maybe I'll get the lead cert, maybe I won't. Don't work that way. You got to do it. You got to play by the rules of the game or they're going to hammer you. Now, assuming you've uh, maybe paused this video and got yourself up to date on the lead uh, by clicking the link below, I'm going to assume you all kind of know what's going on now. If you're going to buy a property that hasn't yet been lead certified like this one, the reason this hasn't been lead certified yet is because it's not even due yet. This one's not going to be due till September, right? So you got several months. You need to understand what to anticipate, right? And the biggest costs of uh, getting lead certified are going to be houses that have, like, peeling paint on their wood siding on the outside and uh, old wood windows. This house has neither. It's got vinyl windows, vinyl porch, aluminum siding. So when it comes time to actually getting the lead certification, this one should be easy breezy, right? If you're going to buy a property that's going to have a huge lead bill coming up, because these are the first times that the city has ever had you do these. So, like, the biggest bills are going to be the first bills, right? After this, it'll be pretty smooth sailing uh, when you do the updates every two years. But the first ones, you got to do your due diligence up front and make sure you're looking like, okay, what lead certification am I going to need to do, right? Because you ain't going to get the seller to do it beforehand. They're not going to go through that process, as you see in the video that you should have watched. If you didn't, I don't know why you're still watching this video because you don't know what I'm talking about. So you got you got to catch up with me, folks. If you watch that, you'll see it's a very cumbersome process. So don't think some seller is just going to do it for you. No, no, no. You're going to have to do that as a buyer. Don't worry, though. Holton Weiss will be here for you. We, as explained in that video, will be the boots on the ground getting that done for you, right? So it should be no big deal. Part of the reason why I identified this property. Other part of the reason why I identified this property, it's in Old Brooklyn. I love Old Brooklyn, dude. I actually grew up in Old Brooklyn. Grew up like five streets away from this property, right? This is on Natchez. I grew up on a street called Bucyrus, right? Ride your bike, walk. Very, very close, okay? 
Uh, it's what I consider a C-grade neighborhood. It's probably the neighborhood in the Cleveland market that Holton Wise has the most rental property density, right? We have got a whole bunch of these properties, hundreds of duplexes that look just like this one, folks. And these things kick off cash, okay? Market rent with where we're at right now, 2022, when we're putting tenants into old Brooklyn units right now, we're looking at about 850 in rent, right? Everything's going up in the world these days, right? Gas is going up, food's going up, uh, I don't know, cars, housing. And when housing goes up, you know what else goes up? Rent. Rent's up right now. 850, okay? When I started investing in real estate, we were renting units like that for 550. Now they're 850. 17 hundo a month should net you about 20 or gross you about 20,400 for the year, but you don't get to keep it all, folks. You got to factor in your fixed and variable expense estimates, which I have done for you on that chart. I think it's going to be about ten, almost eleven thousand dollars to run this property. Don't worry though, your boys at Holton Wise, we're going to run it for you, hundred percent passive. You don't have to do anything. Holton Wise, property management, maintenance, construction, insurance, we do it all, folks. After it's all said and done, I believe long term you're looking at an average of nine and a half in pure profit. Now the price. They got it listed at 139. I'm gonna try to work you out a small discount, but dude, the market is smoking, man. There's multiple offers on like every multifamily property, so we'll try to get it at 135. But if that don't work, you shouldn't be afraid to go 139. If we're lucky enough to pick it up for you at 135, all you gotta do is put down 33 and three quarters. Bank kicks in 101 and one quarter, and that long term should project itself out to an average cash on cash return. I'm projecting 13 and a half percent, folks. Now, one thing to know, current rents, they're legacy tenants. They're on month-to-month -month, uh, terms. The current mom-and-pop owner has not upped their rent in a long time. I told you, when I started this business, we were renting these kind of units for five fifty. dollars Right now, they're about eight fifty. dollars So, uh, current landlord hasn't kept up with the times. He's got one tenant in there month-to-month, six -month, hundo. The other is at seven fifty. What we'll want to do is just notice these tenants of rental increases. I don't think it makes sense to take Mr. 600 and go all the way up to 850, though. That might create an artificial turnover, and then you're going to have to do the turnover costs. I don't got any photos because they're not on the MLS of the interior of this uh, unit. But, folks, if you've never invested in C-grade rentals, let me tell you. You don't ever get your unit back where you just go, okay, everything looks good. Take pictures, take pictures, and then you get market rent from the next tenant. No, no. I mean, we're going in there repainting, cleaning, probably fixing holes, things of that nature, right? That's just part of the game. Uh, so you want to avoid turnovers when they're not necessary, right? You're going to deal with turnovers enough in this business. Whenever you have the opportunity uh, to just continue long-term tenants, you want to do so. So what I'd recommend doing is maybe take Mr. 750, probably take them up to 8, and then take Mr. 600, maybe take him up to like 7, and then next year take him up to 8, right? Slowly work them up so you can keep their butts in the units longer. The fewer turnovers you do, the more profit you're going to make in the long term. Trust me, folks, the people uh, that are chasing tenants out because they're trying to push it to the max rent per unit every year, because they're looking at their spreadsheets. Those are the people that talk themselves into losing money. You got to remember this, folks. Spreadsheets do not rent properties. People rent your properties. This is a people business, not a spreadsheet business. So if you're chasing that greed, you're basically chasing pennies, losing dollars. You don't want to do it. The smart landlord wants to keep his units with tenants as long as possible. Fewer turnovers equal more profit for you. But this one, anyway you slice it, this one's going to be a home run deal. I think it will make a lot of sense for you. Let me know what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.